Yeah, and I would say before I give over to Sokiso and to Nick, I would like to ask the audience um, of just one question. I was not sure about what is the right time actually for events like this. So there is a survey for you. I hope that will now work. Yeah, that I can start. So you should see now the survey and I ask you, please. Uh, my question is, what do you think is the best time for an event like this on a Saturday? Two to three, three to four, four to five, five to six, six to seven, or seven to eight. Please have in mind that's Namibian or German time. So if you are in Kenya, you have to add one hour now. Mm -hmm. okay. Have I lost so you? It looks like. Have we um, lost you? Have we lost you? Okay. Um, you lost me. Yes, but we can hear you. Okay. We can hear you, but we can't see you. But can you see? Yeah, can you see? Yeah, that's because of the survey. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, um, okay. So, see I see you. Okay. What do you see? Do you see all of us? So I finish. So, I'm I just finished. <laughs> I just okay. finished the survey. Okay. So, and as you can see, that's about, yeah. So, it looks like we are at the right time, more or less. <laughs> okay. So now I would like to hand over. Uh, I to can't see anybody. Christian. I can not, me too. I can't see anybody. You can't see anybody. So yeah, my, my, my screen is dark. Okay, your screen is dark. Okay. So yeah, I've got the same problem here. Okay. Um, so please stay in. I just restart. Okay. Um, so don't worry. Um, I just switch off and come in again. Okay. We don't do anything. Don't do anything. I'm just coming okay. in a minute. Okay. So now I'm. That was quick. I'm back. I can't see you. Let me see. Okay. What do I have to do now? Okay. I can see you. You back, Nick? Yeah. Uh, and yep, can I'll you see? see. Yeah, I'm I back. See, I can see. I see Nick. I see Ditif. Okay. I don't see Zukiswa. Yeah. I can't see Zukiswa too. So in the meanwhile, um, I'm. But maybe she's coming. I uh, give her a co-host. And Nick, I also make you as a co-host. OK. So. Sometimes what helps to tip is if that the person who's not, who we're not seeing, uh, if they refresh their browser or their entry mm. to the, it yeah. should come back. OK. Yeah. Yeah. So Sukiswa is also back. Just the she must just unmute. Now I'm unmuted. Great. But, so we can start. I but can't, I can I can okay, now I can see Sukiswa. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I give right. you the floor. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, Good afternoon, um, Africa sorry. and the world. Is, um, I forgot uh, to say that um, uh, you um, about the function of Zoom, if you are not familiar with that, uh, you can see at the bottom there is a chat function. So you can chat and type something in. I will have a look at, at this. And also you can um, uh, switch off your video, which I would like to, that you switch off your video so far. Um, but when you talk later, you can switch it on and also the switch of your mic so that um, to avoid some background noise. 
but you also can um, give us some reaction like um, the thumbs up or if you would like to say something that uh, raise your hand or you can celebrate with us. Yeah. Okay. So, so Kiswa, sorry for disturbing there again, but now I give you the floor. No problem. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you to the very, very first virtually yours, hosted by Gute Institute Namibia, who thought that this would be something interesting to start doing with literature now that we can't see each other. And of course, when they made the suggestion, I then suggested because I was very aware that uh, my brother and good friend was having a new book out, uh, requested that he could please be part of this. And he said that he'd be excited. And so we're very happy that we can be here and discuss Dick's new novel, Paradise in Gaza. And at some point in time in this conversation, we shall select some of you guys to win a copy of the books. So welcome to everyone. We see I've got people in Kenya, people in Joburg, so forth. Welcome and welcome, Nick. Thank you for being our first guest of Virtually Yours. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you a lot uh, to Daitla. Thanks to um, uh, Guthe Namibia to be virtually yours, uh, the first guest. I'm so excited about it. Actually, the history that we're creating today, it's uh, an unforgettable moment. And thank you for um, you know, suggesting me and also being a good friend and also being a good reader and what you're doing to literature. Uh, in the world in general. Thank you very much, Nick. And now for those of you who have probably been living under a rock and who don't know who Nick is, Nick is the author of some of the books in my background, Dog It Dog, After Tears, uh, Affluenza, Soweto Under the Apricot Tree. He's also editor of um, um, Black text, and of course, now he's coming up with Job Noir. But most importantly, for the sake of this discussion, we've got the fantastic novel that I just finished reading two weeks ago Paradise in Gaza. Nick, there are so many layers to this book. I would like to start by asking how much research did you have to put in? You know, you have stories about land, you have stories about Izangoma, you have stories about history. How much, how much, how much research did you have to put in? Uh, let's start with, um, let's start with, with the land, the land issue, which is, which has been yeah. a hot down issue, a hot, hot button issue in South Africa and in Namibia. So how much research did you have to put in that particular issue to write this particular novel? Thank you for that, uh, uh, Zugiswa. I think the first, the best way of answering the question is that um, this is a novel that I've been writing uh, since 2000, and, uh, I think 2000, immediately after After Tears, you know, in 2008, I think, mm -hmm. is the novel Eight. that, yeah, 2008, because it's a novel that I wanted to write instead of um, Way Back Home. So um, mm -hmm. I decided that uh, I, I went to Vet University to do my MA. You know, uh, those who know me know that I always drop out of things, of uh, academia. So I dropped out because um, I felt like I wasn't writing the novel that I was supposed to write. And then I ended up writing Way Back Home. Not to say Way Back Home is not a good novel. It's a beautiful novel. But I didn't feel satisfied in the way that um, uh, uh, some of the things, of the things uh, I would have discussed them. So is the novel, the research, uh, in terms of research, it started around that time, you know, before I've written, before Way Back Home, before Affluenza, before uh, Soweto Under the Apricot Tree, it, 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 I started the research. So the research was both formal and informal, desktop and also like, um, you, you know, physical kind of a, a, a research. But I did the research in a form of uh, 
not in a form of a, a, a you know, a, a slowly, slowly, because I thought that the book was not ready to be written yet, you know. So I did a lot of research in terms of um, going to places, some of the places, although some of the places are fictional, I use real places so that, because uh, I'm a kind of a realist writer, you know, so I fictionalize, but I fictionalize using a real place. So I would go to the, uh, uh, like for instance, uh, 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 there's a, a place called Tunjambili uh, in, uh, in, in case at uh, Kranskop, I went there. I went to a place in Guyane. I went to Botswana, all just to get all the, uh, what a village looks like, you know. And I also had mm. conversations with people around villages, but informally, not telling them that I was researching a book. So that's why when I decided to write it, it came out naturally because the research was there. Actually, the research was overwhelming to such an extent that, you know, I didn't know how to, uh, how to sift it. It was so, there was so much re research and I wanted so much to do with it, with it actually. And, 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 and that's, that's perhaps where I, where I want to come to, Nick. Um, yeah. You know, uh, for, the, for, the, for the young writers amongst us who are in the audience, what would you tell them? When do you decide that this is too much research and you say, okay, but I need to just pursue this particular story and I need to, I need, how much of the research shall I take so that you don't seem like you are being a show off of everything that you research? But yeah. so that the book yeah. also sounds authentic. When do you decide what is enough from the research? Yeah, it's, it's not easy. Uh, I think what I do personally, I, I, I rewrite a book many times. This book, I'm not ashamed to say, mm. was rewritten, I think, about 50 times, you know, since then, you know. Mm. So when you reread, you feel uh, 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 when it, it, sometimes my research felt like academic, you know. I'll give you an example. I researched, uh, when I, re I did a research on, um, a, 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 you know, Guamuse, a place where people used to marry and register in Jobek and section 10B uh, and 10A and 10B, which said, uh, seven, give people um, of the influx control. There was so much research about it and little stories, you know, personal stories that I had to chuck out of my uh, 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 book so that the book could work. So, uh, but I couldn't, at some, when you read the book first time, it's like, wow, this is great. You read it for the second time, and you realize mm -mm, something has to change here. It sounds academic. And then yeah. you keep on, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 changing, chopping and changing. But also what helps a lot and is when you- And of course the come alive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When you give people, uh, uh, like for instance, uh, people, um, I'm the kind of people, a person that normally talks to people about my work, but uh, I talk it in a formal way. So once they tell me and give people, uh, 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 you know, the, my book to read, uh, for instance, I, I gave it to Fred, I gave it to Ukwin, I gave it to different people uh, who will tell me that, no, look, oh, that sounds a very uh, academic. Uh, or maybe they add something that I think, yes, this comes from a real person. Let me add it in a dialogue, or let me just leave it in a, 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 a you know, a, a, in a plot, you know. So you decide when you talk to people. Uh, that's why my characters, for instance, come live because I talk to people. I center my characters around people that I know, you know. Okay. Now, um, for. Well, okay, I guess not only I have read this book, and, and of course, Nick. For those of us who haven't read it, and for those of you who haven't read it, let me just give you a background. Uh, the summary of it, really, it's, it's centered around a man called um, Pisim Pisane, but he's not the main character. And um, it's during apartheid, and he's got two wives. He's got one wife in the city, and he's got one wife in the village. And uh, the wife in the village, um, Kanyisa, believes she's the real wife you know, um, because she was the first wife. But in addition to that, um, the wife in the city, Untombas, was just, they really married this guy because um, her husband had died. She didn't want to lose her house. And then they had a good relationship and they got married. 
and, and then they had a child. Uh, and, and I'm not giving anything away because this is right at the beginning of the book. So at the beginning of the book, um, Pisane goes to the village to bury his mother who's just died. And he goes there with his son from, 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 his, from his second wife, from his city wife, so that Giani, so that he gets to know, um, he gets to know his family, his, his, his village family. And he goes there and yeah, and then the child disappears. Now, I wanted to ask, um, Peace and Pisane has this relationship with, with the village where right at the beginning, it's like he's got this bond with it and he wants to keep coming back. But at some point in time, he just stops coming, you know? And yeah. I didn't understand it because what is, okay, like, why? Why, why, why is this man like this? <laughs> he made me mad. Why is oh, he like this? No, the, the thing is like, uh, that's why I had to employ um, the Influx Control Act. Uh, mm. it, it, I think everything is centered around the Influx Control Act. During the Influx Control Act, which was repealed, I think, in uh, 1986, if not mistaken, what happens is that uh, you were supposed in, no one belonged to the city. Johannesburg was a, uh -huh. a land of Im 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 immigrant laborers. Uh, so we told didn't belong to, it was a white, declared a white area in inverted commas, meaning that the apartheid government uh, could easily tell you to leave. And then uh, uh, where you should live to, they don't care. As long as, if you speak Zulu, even if you haven't been to KwaZulu Natal, you have to go there, you know, and speak to the chief there. Mm -hmm. So this is the man that is, the book is set up around, that, around those times whereby it's not easy for a migrant labor to go home. And also when it's a very difficult in terms of to be a citizen of the city, because in order to be a citizen by then, what you had to do is that you had to uh, uh, be employed for a period of 10 years, uh, undisturbed by the same employer who was white. So this man is, does not go home, he only go, can only go home when your employer who is white says, go home, you know? But also the book is set around the time of political uh, 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 upheavals, you know? There's uprising throughout. So a person is in and out of a job. So which makes it difficult to contact the rural, uh, rural uh, uh, family. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but, yeah. but it seems there is a time that Umpisani, like, you know, makes a very deliberate choice. This is after after Untombazi, Untombazi goes to go to Twasa. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Mpisane seems to make a very Mpisane seems to make a very deliberate choice, not visiting to the and this is particularly difficult for Ukanyisa because she's got two children. Yeah. She's got she's got She's got Usana and she's got Amu, you yeah, know. She's yeah. got these two boys that she's looking after. Yeah. But then this man has decided, firstly, the biological mother of this child is not available, but mm. then him as the father decides he's not gonna come. And this this poor woman has to deal with the drought and everything and looking after these two boys and stuff. Why did you make her go through so much hardship? I mean, was there any reason why she wasn't mad the whole time? <laughs> no, no, no. What, what happens is that I just wanted to uh, also show the struggle of um, uh, rural women because I do have uh, also a connection to that. Actually, my mother is also a rural woman, so I know exactly yeah. uh, that it's very difficult. It, around that time, it was very, very difficult because of the patriarchal system. So patriarchy it, it always um, dictates you how to be a woman you know, mm -hmm. uh, and then it dictates you uh, whether a, a husband can never be wrong according to patriarchy. So those are the things that I was trying to, uh, to show, even the kind of uh, uh, how involved, whether when we say a head of family in patriarchy, we always point at a man. But if you look into this book, the head of a family is Kanyesa mm -hmm. because 
she is the one that knows the nitty gritty yeah. of the family. She's the one who's running, holding the house together. Exactly, raising the boy that is not even his. I think so that communally and whatever. Yeah. Yeah, something that's often not talked about, but that exists um, in when when there's this sort of migrant labor where the husband is in the city and the wife is in the village, is is sexuality. And you bring it out, you know. Kanyesa is in the village, she's horny, but her husband is nowhere to be found. Like, Kanti, why couldn't you just give her like a side nyana or something, just so that she can at least relieve <laughs> herself? You know, what was that? Like, she had to wait for this guy to come after so many years. Kan, Kanjan. <laughs> no, I, I, I thought about it, but I thought like, you know, um, when you have to tell about the story, uh, it would have been a little bit deviated from her character. Because this is a character, she is in love with this man. According to her, there's nothing else in the world except being married. You know that tag of being married because she comes from patriarchy as such. But also- uh, No, she, she does. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, she yeah. does, but, but you see the thing about it, like with me, I was looking at her and she's saying stuff like, like when she's, when she's thinking to herself and she's just like, when this man comes, I'm just going to make him like, I'll, I'll just give everything to him. And then he will never think of that other woman again and stuff. And I'm like, this is, even when, he, when she just given birth, you know, when, when he came and she's just given birth to Sana, she also like, she's very, like, she's very horny. She, she wants, she's full of lust, but she knows she can't act on it because of tradition. So my, I'm like thinking this is a person who's very highly sexual. Saka, yeah. all this time, Umu can't, can't do anything, but she, yeah, no, like you could have even like, let her play with herself <laughs> or something, please. No, hey, no, Nika, no, but I, but, I, but I, I, I just didn't want that to be labeled, you know, um, because Patraki also deals with this labeling, you know? That's the Patrick, label, that, that yeah, is true. Yeah, would have labeled her something, would have labeled her a witch, would have been anything that this does, even if it, it, and we know it does wrong things in most cases. Uh, but everything that it does, if it's wrong, would have been labeled to Kanisa. So I just wanted that. Yeah, My yeah. aim in this book was just to show that look, um, this is how patriarchy works. It works within because I'm, 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 I was brought up. Uh, around patriarchy as well. So it was easier to write such, uh, some of the, um, of, of, of the things. Like for instance, I'll tell you, my father died in 1989 and I don't know, I don't think my, my mother had any relationship after that, you know, you, you know such kind of thing because patriarchy wouldn't, wouldn't allow, you know? Uh, and and it, 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 because it always dictates what a woman, uh, I mean, what uh, uh, the bodies of women. You know, so that's how I was, I was just trying to bring that out, that even under this hardship, there she is still the head of the family. But um, the credit, who gets the credit of being the head of the family is the guy because he can give money. Is. But even, yeah, but even during the rounds, mm. she's the one that makes sure that- But even when he's not giving happens. money, he's still considered the head of the family. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's the, actually the book. It's more yeah. about dealing with patriarchy and also um, polygamy, also all those kind of things. Yeah. yeah. Right. Now, um, then the other thing that you really, really did a lot of research on and that comes out a lot is um, is is uh, Uhutuasa you know, yeah. Um, yeah. being called by their ancestors. Yes. And we see this with Mpisi's city wife, Ntombas. Ntombazi, yeah. you know, she, you know, when Mpisi comes back and says the child has disappeared, then she looks at her child, her, the, the newborn child who looks exactly like this other child, except he's got extra, extra fingers and extra toes Mm. And she thinks, oh my God, this is this is a ghost, this is a curse. And and, and she loses it. Um and 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 you you do something very interesting because you uh and this is this is particularly interesting now because it's 
uh, Mental Wellness Month, you do something very interesting because you pursue the mental health option where she is uh, suffering from um, postpartum depression and of course the loss of a child and she's mourning the loss of a child. But then you also bring in the, the ancestors, the losses who are calling her to be a healer. Um, what was that? What was that like doing that? Doing that research and balancing that out? Because somebody would say, "Well, you know, Untombazi was just suffering from 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 um, postpartum depression." So how did you manage to look at it? And you bring out the postpartum depression and, of course, the depression of losing another child, as well as the call of the ancestors. Because you did it very well, and I, I'm fascinated oh, okay. by how you did that. No, thank you very much, my friend. Um, the thing is that um, I'm very much obsessed with uh, traditional ways of healing. I'm very much obsessed. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I live around the family, some of the family members, distant and also closer uh, healers, you know. And I live around the time when uh, those healers uh, are very uh, are much looked down upon. And then when we always, uh, when we are in the advanced stage of our sickness, that's when we consider them uh, as an option, you know. So uh, you might have, uh, 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 actually this book, uh, that, that, I mean, this particular theme resonates well with what I wanted to do when I was writing Way Back Home. In Way Back Home. Yes, to look into Yeah, I the, saw that. I, I, I could see from that. Yeah, to look into the African ways of healing and then vis-a-vis -vis, um, the Western ways of healing. And to say that the two can easily complement each other because they also, both of them sometimes talk to the mental system of a person, you know, to say that, um, and the herbs that are used in Western ways of healing sometimes are the same herbs that we use in the African ways of healing, except that they are in the Western ways of healing, they are so, so sort of um, chemical, they have chemicals and stuff, but the, the healing process is the same, uh, is almost the same. So I was just saying to myself, let's look into both uh, ways of healing, both Western and traditional ways of healing in, on equal terms, you know? they can both be um, deliver the same result. Uh, uh, and the more we believe, let's not cast away our way of, uh, you know, our, our systems of beliefs, you know. So, uh, because that's what keeps, keeps the family together, as in the book, uh, 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 the family is kept together because it doesn't uh, do away with its traditional ways of uh, healing. Uh, on, and on also way of life. But there's a lot of research that I've been putting through in this book through, um, uh, the, 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 at some point I even went to a, a Twasa area, you know, and then uh, talked to them actually. Oh, wow. And, yeah, I remember in, 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 during the time of the writer in Deben, I spoke to Spisum Zobe, who also wanted to, I, I mm. asked him, where can, I, I wanted to ask from here, you know, where can any, unfortunately I couldn't go, but that's the idea. I even spoke to him when I was still writing the book. And at some point I went to Soweto, in Soweto at some point in, um, I think I went to two places and I asked and I sat with traditional healers, how do you do it? You know, and I have, um, I had a friend of mine from Japan, for instance, who, uh, also wanted me to introduce them to the uh, uh, person that was an African uh, uh, healer. And I went to them because mm -hmm. it's, 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 this, uh, the person is a brother to me, the person that mm -hmm. I, so it was easier. It was an easy, it's a research that was accessible to me in terms of talking to, to, to this person. But of course, it's something that they cannot tell you wholly uh, in, in total. You know, you have to do and more and more research. So I went physically to this person. I read a lot about it. And I, um, I also used my own experience as a child when my mother used to make, uh, use an aloe, you know, to heal my inflamed ear, you know? 
uh, yes. or the voice has been, uh, or, or maybe I, I suffer from... Um, well, they end up and done. Yeah, or a toothache, and then they go to this uh, tree, they dig the roots of the tree, and then I, I became mm. healed. So I realized that no, it's, this is a celeb, my book is about the celebration of African tradition, African way of life, and then uh, also uh, African ways of healing, and not dismissing the fact that we are almost westernized. So I'm using both. Uh, uh, worlds. I'm living in both worlds to heal myself. So the book itself becomes cathartic, you know, in a way. Okay, but but you don't you don't entirely give um, African traditional uh, healing. You don't you don't entirely give them full license because there are certain instances where certain things are said by 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 uh, an Iyanga, you know, to to. Yeah to the client. So for instance, Mbisi's father, you know, Mbisi's father gets beaten up with children and yeah. because they've just consulted, you know, this person mm -hmm. who's told them certain things uh, yeah. about, you know, what the father is responsible for. And of course, I mean, we also see it with Kanyisa's relationship with Amu, you know, yeah. uh, as things progress. I mean, she was ready to believe the worst about her core wife anyway. But this particular yeah. issue, she goes and she does a consultation because her child has um, her child has um, her child has vitiligo, and the, yeah. the 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 man says, "Oh, you know what? This person is being bewitched." So you mm. also don't shy away. Can you talk about that? Because you did you looked at the negative, but you also looked at the, you looked at the positive, but you also questioned the negative. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. How I was think that? I'm... Did you know that you might get condemned for it? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks for that question. I just thought that, you know, in order to celebrate African ways of healing, we mustn't glorify it as well, you know? It, 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 it wasn't for me to glorify it. It's got its own faults, as much as Western ways of healing have got its own faults as well. Uh, 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 you know, so my idea was that I'm celebrating it but I'm also showing the weakness and the people's beliefs and their weaknesses. Like, for instance, as you say, you correctly say, uh, I come from a, a tradition where people believe too much into witchcraft, you know? Anything doesn't go right to you, uh, for you, it's witchcraft. But at the same time, as I show that uh, uh, side, the negative side of it, you know, I'm trying to show that as much as we don't have to, we don't have to glorify everything. What we have to do is that let's celebrate whatever we can take from it, you know? And then uh, uh, if mm. ever it means that it, 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 it can enhance our lives in a better way, let's just celebrate it. But let's not forget that there are some things uh, that we don't need to glorify. Not everything about African tradition is beautiful. And uh, because, uh, 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 as you see in the book, um, people being, uh, you know, accused of being witches and stuff, and also find that it's something higher than what people believed in. Mm. You, you also, amongst the many, many different uh, difficult subjects that you bring in the book that you draw out, you also don't shy away from, you know, it's it's apartheid in South Africa. It's certain apartheid in South Africa, and yet uh, we don't shy away from South Africa's very Afrophobic nature. Because when Beto arrives, the treatment that he he receives in 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 in, in Gaza, this village that has that has nothing, but where you know the the only glory that they have actually is just being from on the other side of the border, but they're the same people as him. Can we, can you say something about that? Yes, exactly. I, I think, uh, you, you know, as I said to you, my mother is from that side, actually, uh, towards, uh, I mean, around uh, former Gaza and Kulu area. So what happens is that I also, uh, during the time when uh, around, I think around 86 or 85, 86, 
there was a state of emergency because I lived during apartheid time and also, uh, you, you know, uh, post apartheid. So I was old both sides. I experienced apartheid and I did experience the other way. So we were sent to the rural area because the schools were, our central, because the schools were shut around that, I think 86 or whatever. It coincided with the death of Samora Marshall, president of Mozambique. And there's, yeah. well, there's always been a civil war in Mozambique throughout between Renamo and Frelimo. So, and Frelimo. Yeah, so during this time, that's the time when people uh, came to, um, around the village that I was sent to, you know? And I realized that uh, the, the, the attitude of the people, uh, even though they were poor, you know, they were poor actually, and they were not even skillful in many things that the young boy, for instance, was skillful in. Bento, yeah. Yeah, but they somehow, because of uh, being uh, uh, on the other side, they thought they were better. Because you know? apartheid told them that. Yeah, exactly, mm. because apartheid uh, told them that. Yeah. But also, some of the things is not only apartheid, it's also the way people perceive each other, you know, that you are from the yeah. other side, and then uh, 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 I'm from the other side, you know. So, I, 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 I've, uh, when I was writing the book, I realized that I had a lot of uh, to talk about uh, between the two countries, actually. Although I lived a little bit, maybe one year or two years. Uh, but I always also went there. I'm also a friend to people that come from that side, you know? And I'm, I observe a lot. I observe a lot. Uh, when I was still living in Orlando West, there was still, there was a, also a Mozambican that was used around. But some people would never pay mm. them. You know, there were good builders. People will never pay them because they thought, ah, I can easily report them. So I was talking about the attitude of the people. That the of the people, of I get you. Yeah, that we see today, the Afrophobia that we see today are not, it's, it's, it didn't start now uh, it, 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 after uh, apartheid was, um, you, you know, the new dawn, you know, it didn't start now. It started yeah. from a long time ago. And some of it was not, it's not a question of apartheid having had anything to do with it. It's about people having an attitude towards another, one another, ethnicity has been there. Another whatever. And yeah, yeah. So I was and trying to show that. One of the things that, that made me laugh, one of, uh, I think it's, it's that thing of South African ex exceptionalism, but one of the things that made me laugh was when, when, when Bento starts speaking um, and, 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 and people say to him that he speaks, um, he speaks bad Shangani because he doesn't speak Shangani, the Shangani of that village, you know? And yeah. it reminded me of, remember that, that soccer, football player who went to, to Holland from South Africa and he said he didn't like it because they speak bad Afrikaans. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was that's, thinking that's, about that. That's about <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I was thinking about that because Bencha is like, no, this is the proper Shanghai. And they're like, no, 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 no. Ours is the proper Shanghai. And yours is the bastardized one. Right. Yeah. Uh, we don't have much time. Uh, I think we might open up now to just, if anybody wants to ask a question, just give, give us a show of hand. Otherwise, Nick and I will probably just Keep talking until we have to do, a, I have to do my draw for whoever is going to win the five books. I saw Carolyn just entered the five books that Quella is giving to readers all over the continent, which we're very excited about. But yeah, um, right. Amu, you know, I was just watching on Netflix, uh, The Letter Reader, and there's a, and, and it's a story about a young boy who's very much like Amu. Yeah. And this young boy is, he reads everybody's letters in the village because he's the only one who's literate. And, yeah. um, and, and, and so Amo reminded me of this guy because everybody's letters and he knows the village secrets. So he knows the young woman is pregnant from the principal, but yeah. Yena, uh, 
she's gonna get married by some guy in the village who doesn't know about it yeah you know yeah. <laughs> so that that was like I, 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 I was like oh were you when you were out and stuff and everything and i know uh gaza is a fictional village um but i know it's based on uh your own particular experiences when you stayed out um did you did you ever have to be put in that position where you kind of knew certain things but you had to keep quiet because you were also this boy from the city always always my friend um at some point it will bring a fight because you, you know village life for me it's 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 a little different because if you tell people that uh, you know there is uh, something that uh, it's like some, some point okay let me just even in south africa there's one thing if, if something is happening in your country and something's not happening around you feel like it's not happening at all. Like for instance, I, I, I let me start by giving you an example. When I came to the UK for the first time, I landed in Paris and then all of a sudden they said, I must take the tube, you know, and go mm. underwater, you know, to mm. London. And then I came, I told, I told people that I, I took a train and then went into the water and then uh, all of a sudden I was in London and then somebody nearly beat me up and say, I'm making them uh, stupid, <laughs> you know, you know what, so, so, so even in, in, in with um, it's, the, it's the same thing, you know, even with um, it's the same thing, because mm -hmm. he talks about his knowledge of uh, uh, the Bento, his knowledge of, um, uh, uh, for instance, of, of the ocean, no one has ever been to the ocean, when you think of the ocean, and then you are living in a village where it's always dry there was drought and if somebody talks about you know a body of water that goes to eternity you just feel like mm. wow these are shitties you know so uh, it, it, so so even amu is the same thing you know his knowledge of things is uh, and bento there is much more than the ordinary village person to such an extent that sometimes it gets mm. you into trouble Sometimes it gets you friends. Yeah. Sometimes people think like you are mad, you know? And when they keep on mm -hmm. repeating that you are mad, definitely you will be mad, you know? Because you, you, you'll be- Yeah, you, you, know, you, know, you, know you know the, you know the, fam the famous saying where like, it suddenly happened in my mom's village and I know a lot of villages where this is a statement mm -hmm. where anytime they'll be like, ah, this guy was very intelligent, but he used to read a lot. He, wrote, he read so much that it drove him mad. Now yeah. he's a mad person. Yeah. I think Noctula, who's just joined us, your sister here, wants to say congratulations. And yeah. uh, she wants to say something. Topoz, I guess. Congratulations. <laughs> Fabulous. You and Zuki together, just two wonderful storytellers. I'm so excited. I can't tell you. But wow. I, I really must, must quiz you, Njomane, that, you know, of course, you are known as a Soweto novelist, right? Yeah. I mean, yes. you have put Soweto on the map uh, with your brilliant you know, novels and short stories of history as it's happening, you know? So yeah. this is somewhat of, of a shift uh, for you, you know, um, moving away from the kind of Soweto brand and history as happening. So yeah. I, I just have two questions for you. One yeah. is, are you not afraid that you're kind of tempering with your brand? You know, because we know you as this Soweto writer, you know, you're, you're a, you're a yeah. G, you know, you're, a, yeah. you know, you're that guy. So is it yeah. not tempering with your brand, number one? But also mm -hmm. number two, um, the subject that, I mean, okay, you okay. know my... I mean, you know my feelings on the whole uh, subject of, uh, we've had discussions before about, you know, traditional yeah. healing, and you know, obviously that, you know, I think the work you're doing is amazing, but there Thank is you. a view, there is yeah. a view, there is a yeah. view that there is a lot of negative um, stuff being said about it, so there actually is no need for you to be balanced. You could yeah. just show the positive without being balanced because so much of the popular media shows the, the other side, right? Yeah. They, yes. that view. So what's, what's your opinion on that? Okay. Uh, firstly, on the brand, uh, so I think, you, you know, um, I, I think I, uh, with uh, being uh, labeled, I've been labeled quite a lot of time, number of times. First time was me being a white old generation, which 
I love that label because it got me invited to different places. I went to New York at some stage because people were thinking I'm a quite a musician, you know, using that label. So it was quite nice for me. <laughs> I, I, I used it and it's done. So I decided, let me tell people, uh, show people who I am. Let me uh, uh, write my stories. So I wrote uh, way back home as a shift from being called the Kwaito generation, from being called a township writer and something like that, you know, and all those labels. Because labels sometimes work for a particular time. So, uh, well, it's fine. Um, uh, uh, going back to your question, um, I've written way back home, which uh, the, um, uh, it was well received. And one of the reasons I'm here in Germany because the Germans love uh, such kind of meat quite a lot. So they uh, even um, translated it. So it's the one of the books that became popular because I wrote about uh, African meat and um, the way I know it. Yeah, so yeah, uh, I've written that. And then in terms of um, uh, African, uh, you, you know, uh, the positive and the negative of the um, uh, African ways of healing and whatever. You know, most Sorry, of- Sorry, uh, Tonde, I'm gonna ask you, to, sorry, one moment. Okay. Tonde, I'm gonna ask you to switch off your camera because we can't, we're cutting. And then only when you're speaking, you can put on your camera. Thank you. All right, go on, Nick. Okay, yeah, in terms of uh, how to, the, the story, I, I believe that, you know, it, it, it's up to the writer. It's very much frustrating for a, a writer, for instance, to be told what to write and then and the best time to write it, you know? So I, what I do is that every book, of course, it will, critics will always say uh, their opinion about a book, but I'm here to tell a story and then the, uh, and to start a conversation. Whether a conversation is the negative one or a positive one, it will be up to the, my, my readers. So I write a story not thinking a lot about, uh, I mean, just to answer the question, I write a story not to think, not thinking a lot about um, what critics might say, you know? Uh, although I love, uh, I love book, uh, I love critics, I love um, also um, uh, book reviewers, I love them. They're doing very much great job for, for us as writers. But at some point, I think like it, it is un, also unfair for people to determine how the writer should write a particular subject and when to write it and how to write it, you know. So I just write, uh, let the critics come later. So I'm not afraid of anything as long as I've told my story. And I'm glad that this is the story that I always wanted to tell. Uh, and I told it better than I wanted to tell it earlier on, if it had come earlier on. Beautiful, fantastic. Thank you very much. Noctula, can you switch off your camera? Tonde, you can put on your camera and ask your question. <laughs> Thank you. Nick, how are you I'm, doing, comrade? I'm very fine, comrade, how are you doing? Thank you for this wonderful platform. I'm not going to ask that question that people say, I've not read the book, but no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm still yes. gonna ask me, Nick, how much weight have you gained since you've been in Germany? I just keep seeing you posting food and uh, I'm jealous, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 so, so, so you That's think I walk- That's question from Tony. So you think I, walk, I should walk around carrying a scale, eh? Yeah. I should walk around carrying a scale to weigh myself how much <laughs> I- <laughs> Yeah, that's what you think. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I, 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 I'd just like to let you know, um, Tonde, that that a scale is a colonial item. Yeah, yeah. You can and, decolonizing Germany. Yeah, and I should have some piece of meat, you know. To show, you know, I, I, at some point, Tonde, uh, my mother called me to say, my son, you must come back home. I think you are starving. So that's why every ah. time I post this, because she's going to see, oh, you have eaten ah. this today. You have eaten ah. this today. So she no longer talks about it, you know? Ah. <laughs> it makes sense. Comment, please proceed. Proceed. <laughs> Just know you have an audience. Thank you very much. Uh, that yeah, was my the, question. All the right. Too. 
Yeah, or the why? You had a question. <laughs> Congratulations, Nick. Then why you had a much. question? Ah, thank you, my friend. Uh, you are not alone. Yes. I'm working with you. Degwa, your question? Okay, all right, just, can you type it again, please? Sorry. Okay, all right, he's trying to switch on his audio, his, his camera. Okay. Why don't you tell Degwa that 3310 doesn't have a camera? <laughs> he's going to look. But okay, so maybe like while we're waiting for Dewa to turn on his camera, we can ask you a very important question, an important yeah. literary question that you know, everybody has said that I should ask you and that I, I seem not to have asked you. Um, mm. All right, in uh, a few months ago, Benazine Evaristo in an interview said, um, she, um, who as you know is, uh, won the Booker Prize last year. Yeah, she yeah. said that um, she has, sex eight times a day when she's not uh, being horny and yeah. wanted to know how, how many times did you have sex while you were writing this book? What inspiration, what sexual inspiration did you have? Uh, I, let me say, uh, I think, let me see. Okay, I'm trying to count. <laughs> I think, I, 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 unfortunately, I don't have that luxury of uh, uh, eight times a day, you know, but twice mm. a day, yeah, I think twice a day went. In the okay. morning, yeah, as the English say, breakfast for the champions, you must always have it. So I always had breakfast for the champions, and then later on. Deva, can you just type the question, and I'll ask, I'll ask Nick, since you can't, you, are, you seem to be having a problem. Okay, all right. So I think at this time it's 16.55, my time. So we are going to select. Oh, okay. The people who are going to win the books. The book. See, I'm shaking this so that um, you people won't say I'm rigging. I am shaking, shaking, shaking. Okay. Uh, first winner is Hilda here. Hilda. From Femrite, Hilda Tongueire. Oh. Hilda, I don't see Hilda. I guess she forfeits that prize. Okay. So we're still looking for our first winner. And Zugi said the same question Did it come to you from Dengwa? Yeah. The question. Dengwa, let me, let me look in the, yeah, I, I in think the I chat. Saw, I saw something. Um, uh, yeah, are I you worried that people will see will see Nick Plower in any of the books you play, pen, depending on your experiences and how they overlap with your plots? Mm. So, no, are you sure. worried that people will think it's autobiographical? No, uh, no, man. That uh, that's the least to worry about. I've been called names. I've been called Bafan. I've been called. Uh, 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 who's this guy? I've been called uh, Advo. So I don't mind because writing is about experience. You write about your experience. But as a fiction writer, of course, I fictionalize everything. And when I say experience, I'm not saying something that you have physically gone through. It's something that you might have dreamed about. Uh, maybe you are taking a friend's experience and make it your own. That's part of your mm -hmm. experience. So writing is an experience in itself. And if you are worried about those little things, you will not, you will never be a writer. Yeah, that's true. Mm, right, okay, let me try again with selecting a winner for this. Kenna now or Pele? Kenna. Is this ah, a we're gonna have a winner from Botswana. Is she here? Okay, I guess can I miss that? Ha! 
Nok Chulam Simang, first winner. And we know she's here. First winner. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I, will, I will come home to sign, to sign it. Are you gonna come? Yes, please do. Yes. I'll be waiting. I'll yeah. be waiting. Oh, and, 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 and tell my friend Pumi that I'm, I'm coming. Okay, I will. Yeah. <laughs> I will. Yes, you must come home. We're missing you. Yeah, no, I will definitely come. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> We're going to look for the next winner. Uh, Cedric. Cedric Mabe. Sadi is not here. I didn't see him. Sadi is not here. Ah, he's lost. The last one? Is it the last one? No, it's not because these guys are not here. Oh, Michelle and hmm? Is It's my colleague, she's not here. Okay. So there's a book going to Namibia. We've got Michelle. We've got Noctula. Oh, she's not here. Okay, she can't win because she's not here. We're only, yeah. only people who are here are winning. Okay, all right. Next. Rati Dom Shonga. Rati Dom Shonga. Nope, not here either. Ha, mm. guys. Ha, Chonde, you win. Congratulations, Chonde Rai. There you are. Second book, Chonde Rai. I'm twigging. I want to twig. I want to twig. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Um, we are going to see Tabile Ketie. Tabile. Is Tabile here? Tabile going once, twice. No, Tabile. All righty. No. I guess at Not this yet. point in time, somebody's going to win something in this room. Ndegwa, you're a winner. We know you're in here. Ndegwa, congratulations. You win a copy of Paradise in Gaza by Nick Songo. Yes. Dineo Keto Hlen. Dineo is not here, huh? No, she's not here. Did you see Dineo? No. Nope. I didn't see Dineo. Okay, Dineo, sorry for you. We've got two more books that we have to select. Um, right, sorry, that was a mistake. Let me put that there. Um, Des LaRue, is Des LaRue here? Des LaRue? Nope. Madhu Krishnan, Professor Madhu Krishnan. No, she doesn't no. seem to be here either. From okay. UK. Yes. Mm. Bongani Tei. Bongani Tei. Didn't see, no. I didn't see any Bongani either. Wow. Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, Felina Vitke. Oh. Felina. No? Yeah. How? Nick, your people. <laughs> ah, Farouk! You're a winner! Who's that? Farouk! Farouk is the fourth winner. Farouk? I know Farouk was in here just now. There you are, Farouk. Yeah, he's still yeah. there. Yeah. He's here. He's here. Okay, so Farouk is our other winner. And Notandon Lobu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Farouk, congratulations, you're a winner. Grandfather wins in the end, but I'm there. Congratulations. <laughs> hey. 
I taught this young lady. I taught this young lady. Nakatula, I taught. Yeah. I taught. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's great. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I was in our favor. I, wow. I, I was going. I was. I was going to. I was going right. to take Zuki's so one to the Zondo Commission because there were too many cadres winning. <laughs> No, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even a cadre, so you know, I had nothing to do with it. But you won. But you, but, but you're you were a choosing cadre? a cadre. No, no, never. <laughs> Don't deny your cadreship now, Farouk. I'm a whistleblower. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Ah, and our fifth winner, Lorraine Stolle. Lorraine Stolle, you are a winner. So, Lorraine Stolle, <laughs> Devon Guru, uh, Farouk, Noctula, Tonderai. So we've got, overwhelmingly, we've got four South African winners and one in Kenya. Devon, congratulations to all the winners. And if you could just catch me on social media, whether on Facebook, or Instagram, you inbox and you let me know what your address is and then we'll give them to Quella and they will send the books to you. Thank you very much for having thank been part you, of you, Nick Clomas launch. And thank to you, Nick, you, thank you work. very much. Uh, Detla, I think we'd like to welcome you back so that we thank you for hosting us. Yeah. It has been absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's a pleasure. You see, I've changed my background according oh. to the event <laughs> yes a, yeah. beautiful <laughs> beautiful and yeah. everyone please be on the lookout yeah. our next 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 um virtually yours is going to be in november and we will have jennifer nansubuga makumbi and we'll be discussing her new powerful book the first woman please join us thank you so much Dittler. Pleasure. Let me just add for the people from Namibia that uh, we have all books from Nick Mlongo here in our library. I don't know if you can see. We have yeah, this we here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have this. Oh, lovely. We have, oh, I think the background is a bit. Can you see that? Yeah, we saw the first two. I saw the first two. Okay, there's yes, a we can. problem with the background. Yeah. And of course, this one. And not to forget, forget um, the way back home way back we were home. talking yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Unfortunately, for those they reading in German, we don't have it yet in German because since March, there was no flight coming in um, yeah. with Fred from Germany. Um, so yeah. let's see who will be first back in Africa. Will it be uh, Nick or will it be the books? Let's see. <laughs> you mean that they, they they're in South Africa, so they will be coming there. So that's fine. OK. When, yeah. uh, wait, for how long will you stay in, um, in Germany? Uh, I'm, I'm only coming back to South Africa in uh, February. Well, that means uh, you, you just came to Germany in February, just before the lockdown? Yeah, just before the lockdown. So I'll uh, only go back home after a year. So okay. uh, this is my eighth month here. Mm. Mm. Okay, interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good. Ah, thank you very much. I really want to appreciate uh, Zugiswa. Thank you very much, my friend, for initiating this. Thanks, my friend. And uh, all the success for virtually yours. And I'm so happy to be the first in this first edition. And Dekla, thank you very much. And the Guta Institute Namibia for giving me this platform. It is a wonderful platform. And then I uh, really, really appreciate your work in literature, especially African literature that you are promoting and also that you are passionate about. So I really thank you and wish you all the success, uh, the Guta Institute. And by, by the way, yesterday, I just come from Weimar the place oh. where Guthe was. Uh, 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 was. Yeah, uh, I just came from it yesterday. So it was so great to be there.
but I'm so much enjoying Germany. I, I'm at the dad, for people that don't know. I'm at the dad and I'm treated well. It's a, one of the most fantastic fellowships. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. And uh, congratulations, Nick. And congratulations, Carolyn and everybody from Quella. And congratulations, Zetler, for putting up something really amazing and coming up with this idea. It's been wonderful. Looking forward yeah. to seeing all of you next month. Goodbye. Yeah. Th thank you very much uh, as well. Like it is a tradition for our Zoom meetings, we're closing up also with some music so that you just can relax, listen Beautiful. a bit to the music. And uh, it's again one of my, my, my favorite uh, group, the Melissa Brothers, uh, which I discovered actually at the lockdown. They, they won a competition in, in, um, in America. Um, and they start actually the next song they're playing. It's 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 a new song. They, the the young guy you will see uh, was the composer and of this song starts with uh, some um, uh, pieces of Beethoven, who's celebrating mm. 250 years now. So I leave you with some uh, music from re remade Beethoven music, and uh, say goodbye and hope see you next time. Bye bye. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Thank you so bye much. Bye. That was lovely. Thank you. Oh.